Previously, we textured this model. We got it detailed enough and we're ready to take it to Unreal Engine, right? We want to render this out or we want to kind of experience it in Unreal Engine. We could do that pretty easily by going to File, go to Export Textures. From here, you want to have an output template. I'm set at Unreal Engine Packed. This is fine for the most part. You want to export as USD. This is the easiest way that I can think of. I'm trying to show you the fastest way of doing it. Export USD Asset. You want to pick your location where you're saving this. Just be sure to click this. I'm going to go ahead and save it on my desktop in a new folder. I'm naming it M0. Okay, that's the new folder I selected. Just select folder and now just export. And it's going to do its thing just down here. It says 100%. That means it's done. We're done right now. And I could just close out of this. So next step is to go to Unreal Engine. Here we are in the wonderful world of Unreal Engine. This is the file I'll be importing my Substance Painter model into. First thing we probably want to do is have a folder where we're saving our model into. So in the content asset browser, we have content and you're going to right click to create a new folder, go to new folder. Now you're going to name it whatever you want to name it, but remember you can't have spaces in this. It will throw an error. So I'm just going to call this, I don't know, I'm going to call it M1, you know, call whatever you want. I'm just calling it M1. Under M1, I'm going to go ahead and import, but I can't import unless I have the .usd importer plugin turned on. So you go up to edit, you go to plugins, type USD, and you'll see I have USD importer turned on. Check that on and it will tell you to restart your Unreal Engine and it'll do that automatically and it'll get you right back to this file and it's gonna ask you to save if you did anything. So go ahead and save it if you wanna do that. USD core should be turned on by default. Now remember these are in beta so weird stuff happens. Go ahead and turn that on, I have that on so that's fine. I can go to import under desktop. I have M0, I should have called this file M1 to match what I created in Unreal Engine, but it doesn't really matter. Under M1 or M0, I have a .usd file. Now I have other ones here. That's not what I care about. It's gonna know how to deal with this stuff. You just need to take whatever your file is called. In my case, t3.usd. Go ahead and click open. It's confirming where you wanna save it. Okay, under content, M1, click okay. Now for the most part, this should be left by default if I remember correctly. Um, maybe material purpose, you can go to all purpose. I think yours might be set to preview by default. It doesn't really matter from my understanding. Anyway, go ahead and click import. Give it a second, it probably needs to open up and load. Right now, if it gave me this folder, if I expand, you'll see I have four other folders. Static meshes is where my mesh is gonna be found. I go back, materials is where my materials are. So you'll see them right here. We're gonna have to edit these slightly. You'll notice our file comes in, or our model comes in as a ghost. You'll see what I'm saying in a second. Go to static meshes and let's drop this fellow right here. Now, this is a pivot point, but I do not see my massing. Where's my massing? If I turn around, most likely it'll be there. There it is, it's right there. Now, why would that be the case? Well, wherever you're modeling, Blender, Rhino, whatever, if you're not modeling this at the zero, zero, which I think this is where that's located, uh, your model is gonna be placed in position to wherever the zero, zero, zero was in your modeling software. That's my understanding. Anyway, I'm gonna get real close to this fellow because I'm gonna reset the pivot point. So what you wanna do is you wanna get underneath it because I did this before and I was missing left and right because when I want to reset it, I'm accidentally hitting something like over there. So I want to go underneath it. I'm going to right click. This isn't the only way of resetting the pivot, but it's just the easiest way for me. Come to pivot and go to set pivot offset here. Okay, this is temporary. If I move it, deselect it and click again, it's not here. Okay, so you want to right click, pivot, pivot offset here. You're telling it where you want it. Then you right click, pivot, set as pivot offset. So that's saying wherever the pivot is, you want to set it as the main pivot. So now if I deselect, reselect, it's in the right place, okay? First thing you wanna do, just so you can control your object. Now I have this gizmo to move it by enabling it, but by clicking W, I can click E to rotate or R to scale up the model. Now you'll notice that this model is like flickering or being transparent at certain angles, being solid in others. Well, clearly there is a problem, okay? We need to fix that problem. We got two problems. We got this artifacting and we have this weird thing where it's just, it's just really not showing me the model the way it should. And for a very long time, I don't know how to solve this, but thanks to ChatGPT, I know how to do it. So go to materials and double click into one of your materials. You need to do this to every material, what I'm about to show you. And once you click into it, you might see this or you might not. If I close details, you might not have details. You might just see something like this. Okay, so to get that details, which we really need, you need to go to windows, this windows, not this windows. You need this windows over here. Click details, okay, it's under details. Now, most likely yours will look like this. You need to expand material properties overrides and you need to click on blend mode. Right now it's set to translucent. If I go to translucent, move it to opaque, it starts to appear. 
this appears properly. So I can go ahead and save it. Now I need to do that to every single material. I can probably close that, open this one. And look, this is kind of annoying, but trust me, this is way, way quicker than creating your own material. If you're to do it the old fashioned way of kind of exporting the textures, creating new materials. I'm not saying this is the best option. I'm just saying this is the quickest option. You get way more control, I think, from the, the traditional method of creating your own, but this is by far the quickest from my experience as you usually have multiple channels that you have to kind of stick into a brand new material. You have to name the materials. There's quite a bit of things you need to do. So this is by far, in my opinion, the quickest way of doing it. Kind of worth it. All right, so I got them all. And one thing you might notice from your model is it might seem way, way brighter than what you saw it to look like in Substance Painter. Now, one of the reasons being is this is a different sun, the different, um, you know, lighting system. Of course, it's not going to appear the same. So it's pretty bright. And one way of doing that uh, or adjusting it to make it look darker, if that's what you want it to look like. Also, you might consider that if you move the sun, it gets lighter and darker. But, you know, in general, it's much brighter than it is in Substance Painter. Anyway, I need to go ahead and edit this. I'll just double click into any of these materials and I'll go to Hierarchy. This is going to open up my graph. If I go to USD Preview Surface, this is the way I know how to do it. Okay, there might be better ways. And if you know it, please let me know. Essentially, you have different um, parameters here, different channels. And there's a lot going on for each channel. You had a LARP going into a base color. Okay, none of this is really important. All you know is you need to adjust the base color and you need to add a multiply because the multiply, if I right click and type multiply, this will allow me to make my color brighter or darker. So I need to disconnect base color by pressing Alt, click. I'll take this line, which was, was connected to the base and I will connect it to A. I'll connect the output of the multiply into the base color. And essentially it's set to one right now. And I'm going to create a scalar parameter by right clicking and type scalar parameter. Okay. And I can name this whatever I want. For this case, I'm not going to. I'm going to connect it after I set it to one. Otherwise, it would uh, kind of freak out if you set it to zero. Here it is. It looks, you know, normal, right? It's super bright. The way this works is if you make it smaller than one, it will make it darker. And if you make it larger than one, it will make it brighter. So I want it to be darker. So I'm going to click 0.2 and then save. And just like that, it looks way, way darker. And this is kind of closer to what it looked like in Substance Painter. I can go darker, but I think this is pretty close. And if I move the sun around, pretty good. So I think 0.2 is a pretty good parameter. I've done that before. I could show you if I make this, let's call it two, it becomes really bright. And then 0.2 makes it quite dark. Yeah, so the multiply helps, okay? I mean, that's what I would do if I was to create my own material. Uh, I'm sure maybe something here controls it. I would be shocked if it didn't but uh, I'm not messing around with this. I'm leaving it as is because I don't really understand it fully. So anyway, I'm gonna save this, close that out. And for the most part, we're looking good. Uh, I do need to still fix this. I'll talk about that in a second. And you'll remember that we have emissiveness in our material, but it doesn't look like there's any emissiveness coming out of materials, but it's pretty bright. So if I control L and bring down the light, you'll see it is glowing. So if I kind of bring this up a little bit, like a sunrise, you'll see the light is still turned on. The lights are indeed there. They are blooming a lot, so I'm sure you can change that in your settings. And if you make it bright enough, it starts to go away. So it definitely is on. Now, how do we fix this? Maybe your object has some of this artifacting. Mine doesn't happen to have any of it, but you know, maybe yours does. Uh, maybe you have something imported here that's creating this weird uh, shadowing artifact situation. What you need to do down here in the command console, there's a few commands that you could type, but one of the ones that tends to work pretty good that I see online a lot of people reference is type r.raytracing.nanite.mode space one if i click enter it disappears so that solved that problem right there you'll notice that the artifacting is gone and it's clear as day yeah and that's it that's pretty much all i wanted to show you in the video hopefully you learned a thing or two catch you in the next one